Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Meeples Included doing my first video here for the channel. Some of you may already know me from Mythic MTG Tech. I'm a Magic the Gathering YouTuber who also does chess and some strategy game stuff. I'm super excited to be over here at Meeples Included doing weekly content, and it's mostly going to be strategy games on the kind of Euro side of things. I'm a huge Euro fan, and for the first video here, I've chosen what is the best strategy game to have come out in the last 10 years or so. I know that's going to be a contentious claim, but this game has so much replayability. It is a wonderful game. I'm going to be going over basic introductory strategy. This video is intended for people who have already played Terra Mystica. If you have not played Terra Mystica and you're interested in just a basic run through of it or review of it, check out Rado's run through or shut up and sit down's video reviewing Terra Mystica. When I say this is one of the best strategy games in the last 10 years, I truly mean it. I've played a lot of this game. It was one of the early board games for the Pacific Northwest Board Game League, and the replay on this is just incredible. There's a bunch of asymmetrical races. There's a lot of different strategies. It's a very in-depth, highly replayable, wonderful Euro game. There's a lot of different ways that you can play this game. In playing it in a competitive format and in a casual format, I strongly recommend playing it with the original base races, with any of the boards that are available, which is the original board, the rebalanced expansion board, or the rivers board that is on the back of the rebalanced expansion board. The biggest aspect from the expansion, which I strongly recommend adding to the game, even if you're not playing the expansion, is the turn order change. In the original rules, you would go in turn order after the start player. The first person to pass would become the start player and then you'd move clockwise around. The expansion adds a changing turn order so that whoever passes first is first, whoever passes second is second, whoever passes third is third. This is very important for balancing the game. In the original, it was best just to sit left of whoever was passing first and then take a huge amount of extra actions. The year is a lot of strategy into when to pass in this game and using the expansion turn order is essential. I also recommend using the diverse point strategies that are in the expansion. They're not needed by any means, but they give a little bit more replayability to the game overall. There is an auction also that is for races that is added in the expansion. I like that victory point auction, especially if you're playing with people who played four or five times and you have a little more depth in the game because the races that are selected and available in that auction have some pluses and minuses. They're not necessarily balanced and the victory point auction does a great job of balancing that out. Now we're jumping into the strategy here. This is a basic intro strategy guide. It covers several different tips for playing Terra Mystica. I may, if this goes over well, do particular videos on each of the different races. I've played through all of the races at least once, and most of them two to five times. This game has a lot of replayability. This is an engine builder. Being able to produce resources early and often is extremely important. You can sacrifice points. You can give up resources early on as long as it builds your ability to make lots of resources later. Early on, victory points doesn't matter. It's creating this powerful engine that is much, much more important to you. The game has a built-in six round timer with different bonuses each round. And it is important to plan a narrative that goes with this particular layout, whatever layout you are given and plan your turns so that you're picking up the round bonuses as they come. Now, there are times to completely ignore round bonuses and do something different, which I'm gonna get into a little bit more, but let's say out of the eight, you got these six tiles moving from the bottom on up. Expansion makes sense really early on, continuing to put out houses, and then planning your first city or your first two cities in that round three would be a great archetype coming up here. Very, very obvious. But you've got till round four before your stronghold comes out, and that doesn't seem compatible with your 
planning of your first city. In fact, you may just skip the stronghold bonus and put it out really, really early. I'll talk about that a little bit more. So put together this narrative that you're going to be trying to play through in the game where you're hitting as many of these bonuses as possible. There are a lot of points in these round bonuses. Tiles are really divided into two different types. There are early game ones and there are late game powerful huge amounts of victory point tiles here anything with the scroll showing that you get victory points at end of turn means that your resources are going to be much less early on and should be avoided early in the game those that give you resources right away are desired early in the game and my two favorites early on are the shovel because this is often going to save you several workers and it gets you money, which is very tight early on in the game. And my second favorite tile is this shipping plus one. It basically lets you go over a river right away and start a second city. If you're playing a five player game, the game is going to get really tight for space and having that second foothold out there or additional foothold third or fourth depending on what particular culture you're playing is extremely important it allows you to expand out after you've seen where everybody else is on the board regardless of the particular turn order you're in follow your culture each one is going to have a different narrative to it a different plan to it most of them have bonuses that come with the stronghold you need to look at that and figure out how to put that into the particular plan that you're putting together. Each culture should be treated separately. And at the beginning of the game, especially when you're looking at a new culture, look at the bonuses that are available there. Look at what you get from your stronghold. Look at whether you're just getting one favor or two favors, those type of things, and plan a strategy that tries to take advantage of the particular differences for a culture. You can't just take one strategy that worked really well with one group and move it over to the next. Each of these different asymmetrical cultures has a different strategy to it. Most of them encourage you to get your stronghold as soon as possible. There are a few exceptions, giants and nomads especially. It doesn't matter where that round bonus is for strongholds and temples. You need to get your stronghold right away. The ability to take that extra terraforming action early on in an engine builder is extremely powerful. The ability to walk over other land types that you may not normally have the resources for is extremely important. Most races out there, witches, for example, the ability to just fly anywhere on the board, almost always you're going to want to do that turn one, two, three, four. That should be your plan. In that first round, make sure to get to that stronghold. One of the biggest mistakes that I see new players make is holding on to their power. You have this ability to exile, to remove permanently from the game power, and you need to use that often and early. As an engine builder, the more things you can put out early on, the more dividends you're going to get round after round after round. Don't be afraid to burn your power all the way down to six, and in some cases, even four or two. Just exile them and start those power cubes moving around quickly. Get those bonuses from the special actions as early as you can. They pay out round after round after round if you're able to build extra buildings. Victory points for power, give them up early. Take all of the early power that you can and build next individuals that are going to reciprocate for you. The early game is not about maximizing victory points. It's about getting that engine going. Anything you can do to maximize that power early on is almost always worth it. This is a political game. Giving and taking is important. Make sure that you're working with the individuals at the table so that they're giving you and you're giving to them. Anytime you have this exchange back and forth, 
the two of you are moving up into team one, two, where other individuals who are being a little bit more conservative with either their victory points or building next to each other are gonna be left in the dust. Once you get into the map, it's gonna be pretty tight, especially in those four and five player games. Don't be afraid to make a switch where you're starting to cut people off. Be a little bit mean, in fact, even extremely mean at times, building directly on other people's land types, even if it takes you an extra resource or two because that's going to be the difference in having the largest city at the end of the game or being the first one to get to a city. If it costs you one resource, but it costs somebody who is out ahead three resources, that is a net positive for you. Yes, it changes the structure of the game, but as long as you've got some allies that you're sharing power with, that ability to cut individuals off and divide up the board makes this a much more contentious and interesting game. When you are taking favors, not all favors are created equal. Take a look at the favors for a second and think about the top three favors that you would pick just generally. Always make a choice based on your particular board state and your plan, but generally three of these favors are much, much better than the others. And there's gonna be some debate on this one, but the two blue is by far my favorite favor on there. The ability to move up on the cult tracks, grab a little bit of extra energy when you need it. It is almost always better than any of the threes early on. It gives you the ability to dirtle when you need to, when you're waiting for a particular end of round bonus tile to be turned in you may not even always use it because it may be more important to pass but having that flexibility gives you a lot of strategic opportunity in this game the other two that i really like early on or mid game are those that give you victory points whenever you put out a trading house or a dwelling either one of those is going to be massive amounts of points there are some really good arguments for the six dwellings. I've seen that used extremely well. And when you're fighting for that top spot on the Colt tracks, the threes are going to go quick late game. Most of the income ones I tend to avoid unless it works with a particular strategy that is specific to my particular culture. Choose these wisely. Make sure that they work with your strategy and don't underestimate the victory points that come incrementally from putting out dwellings or trading houses. Thank you. This has been Brian Rowe with Meeples Included. Our website is under a soft launch right now. We'll have it fully built out here in the next few weeks. I invite you guys to head over there, uh, check out the blog, see who the contributors are, and subscribe to the Meeples Included YouTube channel, which is where most of my board game content is going to be. Thank you guys so much for checking out this new content that I'm putting together. I'm super excited to be working with a wonderful group of people at Meeples Included. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing weekly video content here on board games. And until next time, until next time, this has been Brian Rowe. And remember, use the Meeples wisely.